before we get started today, I would like to bring to your awareness that there is a man who is the same color as you. He's not white. If that matters, to me, it doesn't. The truth is the truth, and I am going to support the truth. But however, there is a man who knows the Bible, and he is bringing out things on another level than what these Israelite camps are bringing out. Now, I was always told, if you can't beat the truth, you might as well join. Now, let's go. This is part two. Black Hebrew Israelites are Christian. You are Christian. You talk about the Christians, but you are Christian. As much as you hate them, you are just like them. They believe in communion. You believe in communion. They believe Jesus died for our sins. You believe Jesus died for our sins. They believe Jesus is God. You believe Jesus is God. Don't try to act like you don't believe Jesus is God. You call Jesus Lord. And you believe the letters of Paul. And Paul says Christ was God manifest in the flesh. Also, you believe that God had a helper when he created the world. You believe there's a co-creator by the name of Jesus. You are a Christian just like them. They believe the Bible has no mistakes. You believe the Bible has no mistakes. They accept Paul. You accept Paul. They believe in one wife. You believe in having one wife. The only difference I've already brought out is that one believe he's white. That's mainstream Christianity. And you believe that Jesus is black. Okay. And the Israelite movement would do better if they just went and joined the NOI. You would be more honorable in the nation of Islam than you are in Christianity. You Israelites are Christian. Now I want to talk about your leader, Nathaniel. He says that Abba Bivens is Elijah, but y'all teach the regeneration of the prophets, and y'all believe that y'all don't know who is who. Then Nathaniel says that when Cain was cursed, his melanin left his skin. Where is that in the Bible? Also, y'all proclaim to be the great army of Ezekiel 37. Where is that in the scripture? Where does it say that you are the army that is in Ezekiel 37? Where is IUIC in Ezekiel 37? Also, your leader teaches that Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Now, even a child knows that ain't true. <laughs> we know that's not true. Okay? I truly believe that the Israelite movement would do better up under a real prophet that is the prophet Muhammad in the nation of Islam. You still have your black and brown unity and you're in the truth. You're not in a lie. Now you being misled by a man who was in the truth of Islam. He was in a religion that did not associate any partners with God to jump in a middleman religion whose rabbi is Paul, whose God is Paul, whose Messiah is Paul. Jesus has nothing to do with the Christian church. The prophet Muhammad told us in the Bukhari 34 and 53, on his deathbed, Allah's messenger put a sheet over his face. And when he felt hot, he would remove it from his face. When in that state of putting and removing the sheet, he said, May Allah's curse be on the Jews and the Christians, for they build places of worship at the graves of 
their prophets. Now that's the truth. The Bene Israel of yesterday, they believed Ezra was their Messiah. They made a church at his grave. The Christians of today have made a church on the prophet Esau's so-called grave. And he don't have a grave. He was not crucified. Neither was he killed. Allah took him. But what did they do? They made a church out of the man's so-called grave. Shame on you. Shame on you. And for boasting, we killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they neither killed him nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Even those who argue for this crucifixion are in doubt. They have no knowledge whatsoever, only making assumptions. They certainly did not kill him. All the Christians have today is assumption and conjecture. The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he brought that out. And if you look at the Christians' theology, they have no scripture from God Almighty where he says Jesus is going to die for your sins. All they can do is misinterpret the dark sentence in Isaiah 53 where it says that his soul will be made an offering for sin. All they can do is twist that. Other than that, they ain't got no scriptures to stand on regarding God Almighty saying Jesus is going to die for your sins. All they have is Paul. All they have is the wolf in sheep clothing because God told us in the law of Moses that the sons shall not die for the sins of the father. Now, fast forward to Revelation. Is the song of Paul being sung in Revelation? Is the song of John being sung in Revelation? If the Christians have ignored everything regarding Moses in the Gospels, why is the song of Moses the first song to be sung? Because it is a witness against the Christians who have made a church out of the graves of their prophets. Then they don't have no spiritual understanding and they don't understand types and shadows or metaphors. For instance, the house of Saul is a metaphor. The house of Saul, speaking of King Saul, from the tribe of Benjamin, whose symbol is the wolf, is a metaphor for Christianity. The house of Saul is Christianity. Get it? House of Paul? House of Saul? Yeah. <laughs> the Israelites don't even get that yet. And the real house of David is a picture of the religion of Islam. And the house of David will always be at war with the house of Saul because it's a metaphor. The house of David is Islam, home of the Messiah, Jesus, peace be upon him. They don't understand that Esau is a metaphor and that Esau represents the prophet Esau. So all they focused on is black and white, black and white, black and white, black and white. They don't even understand that the prophet Esau represents Esau in the Bible. And it also represents the house of Saul. So God's hatred for Esau, my brother, is God's hatred for Christianity, for those who join partners with him in worship, for those who make churches out of the graves of their prophets. God's hatred for Esau, it's God's hatred for Christianity. But the Israelites are so focused on black and white, they can't see this. They don't even get this, that the house of Esau is nothing but Christianity. And there's coming a day when the prophet Esau will be a witness against the house of Saul. This is seen in Quran 4, 159, 
Every one of the people of the book, that's the Christians, that's the Jews, will definitely believe in him before his death. And on the day of judgment, Jesus will be a witness against them. Jesus is going to be a witness against all of you who associate him with God. He's going to be a witness against all of you who are believing in him before his death. And so when you study the Bible and you don't understand types and shadows and you don't understand real metaphors, then you get stuck in the black and white and not realizing that God hatred for Esau is not going into a skin color. It's going into a religion. Now I'm approving. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. This is going to be Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 22. For the whole world before thee is as a little grain of the balance, yea, as a drop of the morning dew that falleth down upon the earth. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things, and winkest at the sins of men, because they should amend. For thou lovest all the things that are, and abhorrest, and that's hate, and hatest nothing which you have made. For never would you have made anything if you hated. So why would God make somebody if he hates somebody? That don't make no sense. In your own gospels, and your own Bible is testifying against you. It only makes sense that the hatred for Esau is not going into a skin tone. It's going into a religion, and that religion is Christianity, whose founder is the wolf in sheep clothing, B.K.A. Saul, the self-proclaimed apostle who pushed the lie that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the co-creator, and that Jesus died for your sins, okay? God's hatred for Esau is seen in his hatred for this religion right here. Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible. Now I want to take you to a story in the Bible. I want to take you to 1 Samuel 22 and 9. Then answer Doeg, the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul. Now, this Doeg is a picture of the real Christ coming back to destroy the house of Saul. Because the house of David will always be at war with the house of Saul. That's two religions. Islam and Christianity, just like today, Islam is warring with Christianity. And this is an ongoing battle until the day Jesus descends amongst us as a just ruler. And the first thing he will destroy is the cross, which is the heartbeat of Christianity. Getting back to verse 9. Then answer Doeg the Edomite. Now this is a picture of Christ at the last day. Which was set over the servants of Saul and said, I saw the son of Jesse. See, son of Jesse. This is all going to Jesus. Coming to know to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitta. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals. And gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. What is happening? Jesus is being a witness like he said he would be in the Quran. He is a witness of what's going on in Christianity. And he is exposing it. So first we see Doeg exposing the house of Saul, which is Christianity. And then he will make war against the house of Saul and destroy the cross. Let's go. And the king said to Doeg, turn down and fall upon the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned and fell upon the priest and slew on that day fourscore and five persons. 
that did wear a linen ephah. And no, the city of the priests smote he with the edge of the sword, both men, women, children, and sucklings, and oxen, and asses, and sheep with the edge of the sword. There's coming a day when Jesus will return, and the first thing he will destroy is the cross, and that is Christianity. Okay? His sword will be bathed in the blood of the Christians. These Israelite camps are lost. They're so focused on black and white. They don't even understand that the prophet Isa, the Messiah, who is only the Messiah in Islam, you can't get him in that New Testament. You can't get him in the letters of Paul. For the Quran says that the Jews and the Christians will believe in Jesus before his death. In other words, they haven't believed in him yet. They won't believe in him until after. He comes and destroys the cross. And that's the truth. And there's many more types and shadows. Time will prevent me to go through the story of Samson. What you think Samson was doing? He was killing more in his death than in his life. That's a picture of Jesus Christ putting his hands in between the two pillars and destroying the cross. Destroying Paul's church, okay? Now, the Israelites, you might as well just jump on board. You might as well just jump on board and support the truth. Right now, you in a lie. You are under someone with false teaching, and they don't have no respect for the Gentile messenger that is the prophet like Moses, the prophet Mohammed. Going back to the Israelite movement, the brothers don't even understand that the holy seed of Israel has been mingled and their little false chart can't validate anybody's bloodline, okay? You got people in these Israelite schools that's whiter than white people, okay? You have people that you don't even, you don't even know who is who, what is what. And none of that stuff even matters anymore because the kingdom is going to be taken from the Christian church. Now, it was taken from Israel. And then Paul stole the kingdom. And he will have the kingdom until Jesus Christ descends amongst us and destroys the cross. Christianity and Islam is going to be at war until the end. As it is written, Esau is the end of the world. The final plague that the Most High will do, in which he will get the most glory he's ever gotten, is when he closes Prophet Esau's eyes. Peace be upon him. This is a picture of the firstborn being killed in Egypt. Who is the firstborn according to Paul? It's Jesus. He is the firstborn. He was a picture of the firstborn being killed in Egypt. There's nothing new under the sun. Why does Allah save Jesus and then causes him to die? Because God is going to cause Jesus to die a natural death at the end. And just like the Most High was famous for killing the firstborn, it's the same exact thing that's going to happen with the prophet Isa. God is going to get the most glory when everybody sees that Jesus is not God. Oh, it's going to be some crying. The cry on the day of the Lord is going to be very bitter when the church learns that they haven't even believed in Jesus yet. They won't believe in Jesus until after he dies. And that's when God will get the most glory. So the metaphors is very important. You have to know that the house of Saul is Christianity. The house of David is Islam. Now think of David. David was famous for the 10,000. And 
the Prophet Muhammad showed up in Mecca, 629 CE, with exactly 10,000 converts, 10,000 Muslims, in the same land that Deuteronomy 33 and 2 tells us of, and that is Paran. Okay? Not only that, Judah means praise. The Prophet Muhammad's name means praise, praiseworthy. And the real house of Judah is the house of Islam. And their hands is in the neck of their enemies. Who is the enemy of God? Who is the false prophet? That's Paul. That's the wolf in sheep clothing. So the real house of David is always going to be at war with Saul. Look in the Bible. Wasn't the house of David at war with the house of Saul? That's a picture of two religions, Islam and Christianity. And this war will go on until the end. You have Christians converting to Islam. Then you have Muslims converting into Christianity. It's an ongoing war. But what's happening? Islam is the fastest growing religion. And by 2050, 2075, most definitely, Islam will be the largest religion. Okay? And even until the end, this war is going to continue to go on until we receive supernatural help. And that is going to be the prophet Isa returning and destroying the cross. And then he will die. He will die a natural death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will receive all of the praise. So the Israelite movement is nothing but organized Christianity. That's all it is. They don't even promote love for their own people. The moment you leave that school, they don't love you no more. They have no more love for you. See, they don't even know how they love their own people. They get you in them schools. The moment you leave because you don't agree with the teachings, they will put you on a bolo list and then they will put you out and then they'll see you in public and they'll have more love for the opposite race more than their own. They won't even speak to you. Okay? Why? Because it's a false movement. The realest religion we have on planet Earth, and this is coming from a man who's been studying the Bible for over 20 years, is the religion of Islam, okay? The white man stole the religion of Christianity. He painted Jesus white. He made Jesus a god, okay? He is not going to convert to Islam, okay? Some of them are, but for the most part, Edom's pride will not allow him to humble himself and to receive the truth of Islam. Wake up, my brothers. As much as you hate Esau, you are Esau because you are in the house of Saul, which is the house of Esau. Because think about it. All these churches that have Jesus name on them, they don't belong to Jesus. They belong to Paul. So the Christians today believe they are in the house of Esau. They believe that they are the house of Esau, which is the prophet Esau. They believe that this church belongs to Jesus, but no, a wolf in sheep clothing took it, okay? It's the house of Saul. The first king of Israel was who? King Saul. The first time a man popped up and became king, what tribe was he from? He was from the tribe of Benjamin. His name was Saul. Oh, it's the exact same thing in the New Testament. Okay? The Christians have the kingdom. The house of Saul. The Christians have the kingdom today. Okay? It went from the Old Testament Saul to the New Testament Saul. But one day, the house of David will take the kingdom. The stone which the builders rejected will eventually have the kingdom. And that kingdom is the nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.